going to analyze a movie uh, called Runaway Jewelry, as you see right here with my PowerPoint. And we go to the next step. Is um, this movie is about the tri the trial between gun companies? So there are some people who who are against the guns and those who are supporting the gun companies. So the main point in this movie is about getting justice. Some people were killed were killed in one shooting. Uh, so in this movie. In this movie, as we say, there is there was creativity and knowledge used to win this case. And in this movie, I focus I focus on two relationships. They took my attention, and these were the main ones. So the first one is Nick and the girlfriend, the girlfriend Molly. So it, these were one of the main relationships that were acting so much to win this case. And the next relationship is Mr. Rowe and Mr. Fitch. These were this is the relationship between the lawyers the two lawyers okay next uh we go to the next slide the next slide is about we go we go more deeper speaking about um uh, analyzing more in the relationship between nick and the girlfriend so nick was one was picked as one of the juries and the girlfriend helped nick to 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 win this uh to manipulate the 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 juries so that they can help him support support him like against the gun the gun companies so in in their relationship their relationship was an intimate intimate relationship because there was romance okay so the next one we go to the interdependent uh, in their relationship the relationship of Nick and the girlfriend Molly uh they had like um interdependent relationship like they were committed and they relied on each other they relied on each other like helping each other to achieve the goal of winning the case uh for example nick uh nick was one of the juries and then the girlfriend was helping her like to like to win like to manipulate the juries to go like to to be on Nikki's side against the gun so that they can win the case. So Molly played a Molly the girlfriend played a role of tricking the lawyers, asking them for um asking them for money and then um and Nick played a role inside the building to manipulate the the other juries so that they can support him. Next is a uh, uh, instrumental functioning. So in their relationship, there was communication, but the way they communicated was uh, they exchanged messages so that they can make their uh, their goal to be successful. So what they did, like Nick and Molly, Nick used letters just like sending through the window, sending to the girlfriend through the window because he was not allowed to be outside the building because he was one of the jewelries. And then also they used to meet in a church, a sacred place, so that like to make the plan, like how to work out with the plan so that they can win the case. And also the other thing it was um, they used the phone, like messaging on the phones and also making calls. That's how they used to communicate, like to achieve the goal. They were not they were not allowed to to be in public like to do that in public because it was not illegal they were tricking like Molly was tricking the the lawyers and and Nick was also playing uh like was playing the role of manipulating the the other jewelries which it was not right so they were not doing it like in public so they that's why they they met in a secret secret place where it was a church and also outside like they used to message and then using letters so the next next was non-verbal like the non-verbals like in this relationship we come to see like there was non-verbal like financial expressions like between this these two people um so they reached at the point where uh it was becoming so difficult because they were playing a tricky role like uh tricking the lawyers and also um, Nick also manipulating the juries to be on his side, so they came to know like there there's some people who are behind this, and they got to know like Nick. They had a suspect like Nick, and also 
there was a girlfriend. They tried to kill the girlfriend, but they were not successful. And also Nick, uh, they started attacking him, like, in his house. Like, they started burning his stuff. So uh, they, they had to meet with the girlfriend in the sacred place, which was the church. And they, they like, Nick wanted to... Uh, wanted to stop, wanted to stop the, like, the case, like, of tricking and all the stuff, but then the girlfriend said, no, we have to, to achieve this goal, we can do it, and there was some disagreement, and then in this, we observe, like, we observe the nine bubbles, like, Nick was, was so much, like, angry, like, was like, no, if they get you, I, I can't protect you, I'm inside, I can't, I can't do anything. I can't protect my girlfriend, so it's dangerous. But the girlfriend was like, no, I can do this. But we saw in his eyes, like, he was listening so well, like, he was giving full attention and everything, like, listening to to the boyfriend. And also, and also when Nick touched the girlfriend, like, trying to comfort her, like, everything will be okay, even if we're in this situation. But then they reached at that point of agreeing, like, to each other. They were on the same cell, so we saw those nine bubbles like I contact, touch. And so the next relationship is about Mr. Rowe and Mr. Fitch. This, uh, this is between the lawyers, and they meet in the bathroom where they, they all show power, like aggressiveness, like speaking. Like, one is like Mr. Rowe, Mr. Rowe is against the guns, and Mr. Fitch supports the guns. So when they meet, there was aggressive like tone of voice, and everyone uses it to show the power. And uh, we saw, mo like we saw the f like financial explosions in in between these two people, like how they looked at each other how, when they're showing all this power and this and everything. So we move to the next one. Uh, in conclusion, this movie showed uh, showed the concept, the cost concepts, and it was educative, like to in terms of getting justice. Um, against the guns 